Hey guys, this is Sarah with Raven's Crochet. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad you guys, I hopefully, are doing very well today. Happy Monday, by the way. Um, so my name is Sarah, and my furry feline Raven is here. I'll look at the camera. You guys can see her. Maybe. Nope. Okay, she's already out of frame. <clears throat> she's walking around. Wait for me to love on her. I gave her her morning treats and her breakfast. I had my coffee. So now here I'm doing this tutorial for this beautiful lace stitch. <clears throat> this is the stitch I kept talking about on my channel for the past, I don't know, two weeks. Um, I'm only halfway done with a scarf. I'm not going to finish it because I'm just so anxious to get this tutorial off to you guys. Um, sometimes I feel like I get behind with so much stuff going on in the world. Um, and some people just can't wait. I know some of you are understanding. Um, take care of you, family first, yada, 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 you know. But this channel is part of my life and part of my hobby and part of my passion. So I'm going to go ahead and measure this. Now, again, this is only halfway done. Um, but this is beautiful so far. I'll show you here in a minute what yarn I used for this. <clears throat> so the, me the measurement for this scarf... It's 11 inches wide, and I like my scarves to be a little wider. <clears throat> I'm going to fold this in half and then quadruple the number so I can tell you what the finished scarf size will need to be. So 14 inches, that's 28 inches, 56 inches, it's just underneath 60 inches long. We'll just go with 30, 60, yeah. We'll go with 58 inches long, is, is how long this scarf is going to be once I'm finished with it. So again, 11 inches wide by 58 inches long. And I like wider scarves, like I said. You start with your base chain on a multiple of 4 plus 3. And I'll explain that here in just a second if you're not familiar with the multiple terms. I have 10 shells across, and these are pretty much two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. You're going to skip three chains on the base chain row, and then you're going to work into your fourth chain, two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, skip three, repeat. The very beginning and the very end of each row, you're just going to have one double crochet. And when you start your next row, you're going to chain three. That's going to count as your first double crochet for each and every row. You work your first shell on top of the previous shell from the previous row. So let's get started. Here's the yarn I used. <clears throat> Stylecraft Amour. This is an Aran Worsted Weight, number four. It's 60% premium acrylic, 40% superwash wool. You still don't want to dry this. Any type of wool I hear recently does not like heat. So I'm going to... I'm going to um, forward that to you guys in case some of you don't know. Anytime, anytime you're, you're working with wool, for my opinion, if it is more than 20% wool, I would recommend gentle washing or hand washing and then laying flat to dry. If it's like 15% wool or less, I wash it like normal. And, and as long as it's mostly acrylic or nylon or whatever, it, it, it usually does fine. So... This little donut is 240 meters, 262 yards. It says Aaron weight. That's a number four. But it's a, it's kind of a thin four to me as I was working with it. It felt like it was between a three and a four, which is perfect because it gives it a, a more of a drape. I think it has beautiful drape. Very beautiful. And I will wear this. <clears throat> Once it's complete, I will wear this in one of my videos when, when I show myself again. And I'm also using a 6.5 millimeter hook. I love my tulips. Now I have to be extra careful today because I smashed my thumb at work last night. You can't really tell here in the video. But the whole entire nail bud was bleeding. I thought I lost my thumbnail. Like no joke. So cringe fact factor here. If you ever break a nail and it is just dangling by the cuticle, you have to pull the entire thing out in order for your nail to regrow properly. <clears throat> I learned that from experience. My next door neighbor, about 10 years ago, she was um, an ER nurse. And oh my gosh, she has saved me numerous times on ER bills, big time. We're still friends, she's on Facebook, but she's busy, busy, and I'm busy, busy, so we don't really talk that much. But we catch up and talk every once in a while on Facebook. So <clears throat> my scarf, <clears throat> I'll just go ahead and leave this here. 
as you guys can see the beautiful yarnness and everything um, and the stitches are upright this way here we go the stitches are, are, are upright this way so there's the bottom of the shell here's the top of the shell and then the next shell is worked in right on top and you're also going to need scissors I like to keep my big giant coffee cup here I only drink tiny cups of coffee so I keep my scissors in here extra crochet hooks there's one of my furls one of my yarny friends gave me Here's a writing pen one of my yarny friends gave me. It's so beautiful. My little amethyst diamond. This is a pom-pom maker. <clears throat> I've got my back scratcher here. This one is cool. It kind of extends. Um, there's a... It's a darning hook, I guess, <clears throat> for the, the loom knitting tool. And <laughs> I crocheted this little thingy to put my vape in it, but I don't even use it anymore. So anyways, I've got some tissue in there and stuff, but I keep this on my coffee table at all times. So I always, so in case I always need something, I can grab it real quick. <clears throat> so you're going to want to chain a multiple of four plus three. So again, what that means is you want to chain four until you have the chain as, as wide as you want your project to be. And then <clears throat> chain three. So chain four. And a multiple of four plus three. So I did. I chained forty plus three on my scarf. So chain forty three. But on this one, I'm just going to show you a sample stitch because I need to add this yarn to this scarf. But I wanted to show you guys how this yarn works up with this stitch. So I'm going to do a sample swatch here. I'm going to chain seventeen. So a multiple of four. One, two, three, four. Another multiple of four. One two, three, four, that's eight, another multiple of four, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then your plus three, one, two, three. So twelve, I have fifteen stitches here actually, so we're just going to do a small, a small swatch here. Let me move this out of the way just a little bit so you guys can get a clearer background. You can still see the stitch and the beautiful yarn here. Get some yarn slack. <clears throat> okay, so I like to work in the back bumps. You don't have to. You can work underneath this top loop here, or you can turn your chain over and you can work right here in these back bumps. So what I like to do to keep the gap smaller is normally the the um, normally general patterns will tell you when double crocheting you're going to double crochet in the one two third chain from hook, but I like to double crochet in the second chain from hook to keep that gap smaller. So there's one. Two, yarn over, and I'm working my first double crochet in that second chain from hook. And then <clears throat> one more double crochet, chain one, two more double crochet. Okay, so that's one way to do it, but we're not doing it this way. Instead of restarting this video, I'm just going to ask you politely, please scratch that. Please ignore what I just showed you. I'm going to do this whole thing again. Okay, so let me just make my chain again real quick here. I'm so sorry, guys. I just did it the wrong way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, plus my three. Okay, so I'm going to chain in the fifth chain from hook. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to turn it over and work into the back bump, yarn over, and work my first double crochet. Work a second double crochet in that exact same chain you just crocheted into. Chain one, and then two, do, do a two more double crochets right here in that exact same chain. And here you've worked your first shell. So at the beginning of each row, you're going to want to have a chain one space, your double crochet, a chain one to skip over that chain one gap right there. You got your first shell. So now we're going to skip three chains, yarn over, skip one, two, three, and then into your fourth one, work your next shell. And I'm working into the back bumps on that chain, but that's personal preference. You're more than welcome to to um, work your first row normally or as you prefer into the front of the chain instead of the back bump. So two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet and all on the same chain right there. 
Okay, I'm going to yarn over and skip three, one, two, three, work into the fourth chain. Another shell. Oops, I forgot to yarn over. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, try that again. Yarn over. One double crochet. Two double crochet, chain one, and two more double crochet. Yarn over. We are always going to have two chains left. Yeah, one and two. So work one double crochet in the very last chain at the end of your row. And this is what your row will look like. Now I know the bottom looks funky, but the wider your project is, the evener it will work out as you keep going rows. This is the bottom, the one I started with, and it looks really good. It's all evened out. It's not gappy and loopy. There's no extra stitches hanging down. It looks very nice. So it will all work out evenly like that once you keep going and get some more rows on. So this is a one row repeat. Super, super easy. Here's what you're going to do on every single row. You're going to chain three, turn your work, and one thing I love about this stitch is you don't have to work in any of the loops except for your base chain. Once you get your base chain done, your base row, you're golden. So you're just going to fly through this pretty much. You're going to work in the tops of these shells in the chain one spaces. And that's one thing that makes it so easy for beginners because you don't have to fight your hook as you're learning to hold your yarn and work your stitches, you don't have to fight your hook into those smaller stitches. You just have a chain one space to work into. I just did my first shell. Two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. Yarn over and go right into the next shell. And do two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. Yarn over, go right into the next shell. Two double crochet. chain one, two double crochet. And you have this little loopy thing here. This is personal preference. You can work a double crochet in the top of this chain right here. But what I like to do is just to yarn over and go right into the whole entire space. Not into the chain loops, but in this right, this big loop right here, that loop space. And then I work my chain three and turn my work and I do the next row. You know what? Make sure before you continue each row, see I got distracted talking to you guys. I got two double crochet, chain one, one double crochet. Easy fix. Check your work before you go off to your next row. I highly recommend that. And I have gotten myself into the habit of doing that. I try to check my work at least at least bare minimum every two to three rows so that way I'm not having to frog back that much work in case I do make a mistake. Please, please, please check your work before you move on to your next rows, especially if you are a beginner. Okay, let me get some more yarn slack. This yarn is so pretty. It's so squishy and soft and it just bounces back. Oh my gosh, I love this yarn so much. It's so, oh my gosh, I just love it. It's such a joy to work with. Okay, so let me gather up my work here. I just pulled out that last stitch. Where am I at? Okay. So I chained three. I um, worked one double crochet, two double crochet, chain one, and then two more double crochet. Come on now, come on. My yarn slack is hanging down, so it's kind of <clears throat> messing with my tension. Make sure you have loose tension in your left hand where your working yarn is coming from, because it is actually a lot harder to work your stitches if you have some um, if you have something pulling on your tension. So make sure it's loose. And make sure you do what's comfortable for you as far as putting your yarn in a yarn bowl or a large mixing bowl, or making yourself a basket to put your yarn ball in. Um, a crochet basket is perfect for if you want to make a yarn ball. 
Um, I'll show you guys how to do that at some point. Not sure when. I have a lot on my plate right now, but I really wanted to show you guys this this stitch because I just I saw this yarn and I fell in love with it. So, and there's a double crochet in that last chain. Now again, this is personal preference. You can work your last double crochet in the um, in the space loop here, or you can work it into one of those stitches. But either way, it's going to look gorgeous. And when you're done washing this, you can you can absolutely block this if you want to, like put it in the washing machine, spin it, or hand wash it, and then dampen it with a towel, and then. Um, Lay it flat on a towel surface. You can you can also get those um, 12 inch puzzle pieces that kids crawl and play on. So much cheaper than the ones that you get in the craft department. But I like to lay this on that, maybe like with a towel if it's extra wet. And you can use like you can use straight pins to hold it in place if you want to block it. So here is the stitch. Again, one of my favorite stitches, and I hope you guys enjoy working the stitch. If you have any questions please feel free to drop them in the comments below or you can send me an email ravenscrochet21 at gmail.com now I don't check my email every single day I'll go ahead and, and make note of that to you guys I check it at least three to four times a week though so I am on it I'm just not on it every single day um, I do have a full-time job that I love and um, and you know home life and everything Raven and family and stuff, but um, again, if you guys have any questions, please feel free and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I do go through and read everybody's comment, and then um, stay tuned. My next video coming is some more happy mail, and, and then after that, you will guys you guys will see me wearing this scarf. I'm not sure if I'm going to put a border on this though. That's one question I had for you guys myself. Is I love how it is. And the frame and here is the side here's what the side looks like when you're I'm um, see I'm just going into the spaces here on the sides I'm not chaining I'm not doing my double crochet in that top chain right there I'm just going into the whole entire loop and I think it looks pretty if I wanted to do a border I would do double crochets all the way around the edge I would do maybe two double crochets here one double crochet, two double crochets, one double crochet, and I would alternate. In the corner, I would do two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, just like a granny square, except for granny squares have three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. I'm just going to do two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. But anyways, I'm not sure if I want to put a border on this or not, because here's the top edge, and then y'all saw the bottom edge. So they do look a little bit different. So if you feel like I should put a board on this, please feel free to comment. Um, but I'm thinking about leaving it like this too because it still looks just as gorgeous. I'm just, I'm not sure. I'm undecided. I have a couple more days to think about it um, as I'll be working on this before I go to work today. And hopefully I'll be working on it tonight when I get home from work. But that's all I have for now, guys. I hope you all are having a fantastic week so far. Please stay tuned to my next videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I have been sitting at 143 subscribers for like two weeks now. So if y'all could spread the word out, maybe hit up your social media platforms. Um, tell your other yarny friends who may not know about this channel. Please spread the word. Please spread the love. Um, give me a like on this video. If nothing else, just hit the like button. And seriously, seriously, and sincerely, too. I almost said those two words at the same time. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you guys like this tutorial, the stitch tutorial. And if you make anything, please feel free to email me a picture. I love to see what you guys are making. If not, then if you are familiar with Franny's channel, go send her a picture of your finished makes to Franny's channel. And she, as she does show and tells on, on her, on her um, channel so everyone can see what everyone's making so again thank you guys so much i hope you guys are having a great one love y'all bye bye